from sports to music because in the days of the Pet Shop Boys and Big Hair, it was the coolest pop magazine around. Half a million teenagers a week stomped off to their bedrooms in the 80s to read about the latest music gossip. Smash hits, in case you hadn't worked it out. Well, it's announced that it's closing after 28 years of publication, and its publisher, ZMAP, have said that it's now a magazine whose time has passed. Well, we've got a celebrity guest, Andy McCluskey, from Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, who, if I remember rightly, used to have very big hair and had a string of hit singles in the 1980s, and you're still in the pop business, Andy. You found an atomic kitten, didn't you? Uh, for my sins, yes, I am the man responsible. <laughs> <laughs> and you wrote some of their songs. If not, uh, yes, uh, right. the, the early ones, including Hole Again. Right, well, that's your credentials. What do you make of the demise of smash hits? I think it's not exactly a surprise to people. It's, um, its readership has been in steady decline since its heyday in the 80s. I suppose it reflects naturally the changes in, in pop music and, and the pop music audience. Uh, I'm sad, as I think anybody from my generation and, and subsequent, um, you know, music fan generations will be, if, if not for no other reason than it proves we're all getting a bit older. It was you, iconographic in its era. You didn't read Smash Hits, surely you were too cool for that. Well, the interesting thing is that bands of my generation, from the sort of the out-and-out -out pop bands like Spandau and Duran Duran, but ourselves, the Pet Shop Boys, Depeche Mode, Human League, we were all bona fide a smash it front cover pop groups. Uh, the difference was in those days, perhaps to now, that we, we wrote our own songs and had some more control of our own destiny. Yeah. Are things changing so much, as with so much of society, because of technology? The, the iPod generation, it's changed the way we all access music. Well, obviously that has changed considerably in the way we access music, whether it's changed dramatically in the way people choose to read about it. I mean, the readership of most music magazines has been in decline for some time. Smash It's Forte, when it first started, of course, was, was the novelty of printing the lyrics. Well, you can go and download those off the internet now. <laughs> so is it a reflection then more of technology rather than the industry changing? I think it's just a reflection, quite simply, of the fact that popular music is, is always changing. By definition, it appeals to the next generation and the new fashion and the new trend. And maybe Smash Hits has, to some degree, painted itself into a corner. It's quite naturally followed the development of popular music from bands like myself and others from the 80s into the more what would be considered manufactured bands these days who frankly there's less of them around and of course, because they don't write their own music or control their own image they don't have a lot to talk about other than their favorite food and the color of their socks <laughs> <laughs> well there's fewer around you say but that's really quite a recent development isn't it surely it, feel, it, it feels recent to me I feel as if we went through a very long era of manufactured bands many of whom I liked but you know yeah. the, the real music's only emerged recently well, I mean, it depends what you describe as real music, but obviously, I mean, there's, there's somewhat of a renaissance in the kind of rock pop area. And band, I mean, bands like Franz Ferdinand, Kaiser Chiefs, Arctic Monkeys, 20 years ago, they would have been on the front cover of Smash Hits, but Smash Hits' audience now is probably far too young for them. Their natural habitat is, of course, the NME, which, strangely enough, looks now like Smash Hits used to 20 years ago. Oh, does it? Oh, well. <laughs> Perhaps Changing that times. Us. Is there really a big difference in the number of who, who write their own material, like, like you did with orchestral manoeuvres in the dark? I think at the time, in, in, in the late 70s and 80s, it was just natural for us to do it. What we realised in hindsight was that there was a whole generation of bands who were writing and performing their own material. Prior to that, in the 50s and 60s and in the 70s, there were a lot of bands who were given material by producers and writers and of course into the 90s, I mean take that probably heralded the return of the band for whom the songs were, were written and the image was created and, and for the last 15 years really it's, it's gone increasing like, like that in the pure pop area. Right, well I remember you well at the time because we used to be in Caldy Grange Grammar School's debating society at the same time. <laughs> oh my God, yes, well, hopefully people will be remembering us more because we're actually uh, going to be making a record and touring again later this year. <laughs> All right, Andy McCluskey, you haven't lost the touch in plugging yourself anyway. Thank you very much indeed, thank you. I like Hole again though, nothing wrong with that song, one of my favourites. Let's catch up with the weather prospects right now, here's John.